Well, praise the Lord. We're glad again this evening that we're back just to share the love of God and tell you that Jesus loves you unconditionally. And so today's a day of salvation. Tomorrow could be eternity. We never know when that day's going to come. We just know that it's surely coming. How do I know? Because the Bible tells us, God tells us, that it's appointed unto man one time to die and then the judgment. And so, you see, if we don't want to face the great white throne judgment, we better get ready to leave uh, before we leave this old world. Uh, because uh, otherwise, it's going to be too late. There's a lot of people going to repent. They're going to repent. They're going to repent, but it's going to be too late. And so I, I'm glad for the goodness and the greatness of God that God's able to do over and above what we're able to know or think, what we can even imagine, God's able to do it. And so my prayer is today that you'll look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, my, the Savior of our life, of our soul, and my, our heart, and, and we can get and we can go into the kingdom of God. Yeah, uh, the saved will also uh, face the judgment that that'll be the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, and whenever we gather together there, uh, we're not going to be judged according to our sins because our sins are have already uh, been judged. Uh, whenever Jesus took our place on the cross of Calvary, you see. He atoned, he atoned for our sins, past, first, present, and future. And so, I, I praise God. That don't mean that we're perfect because we're not. That's the reason why that it says whenever we sin, uh, uh, we need to repent. And if we'll repent, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us uh, from all unrighteousness. And so, I'm glad that today's the day of salvation. I'm glad that Jesus looked down upon me in mercy Am I in not in judgment? And so we just need to pray that God would use us. Am I as instruments that his love and his spirit could flow through? Uh, that the world might know that he's alive, he's not dead. Yes, he was crucified, uh, but he was resurrected on the third day. And he ascended back to the Father. And today he sits on the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession uh, for the children of God. He's praying for us. Uh, and so that's the reason why that we know uh, that we're going to make it one of these days. One, because Jesus don't give up. Uh, and so we need to give up. We, we don't want to quit. And if we don't quit, God won't quit. That's just all there are to it. We might stumble. We might fall. We will fall. We will come short. Uh, uh, but if we don't quit, as long as we keep repenting, he'll keep forgiving us. And I know people say, well, now, uh, my, uh, whenever we do the same thing over and over again, no, God don't want us to do that. He don't want us to continue or practice sin. Uh, uh, but you see, he knows that we're going to fall short. He knows that we're going to sin. Uh, and one day Peter looked at Jesus and, and he said, Lord, how many times will, uh, should I forgive my brother? Seven times? And Jesus said, no, but 70 times seven in one day, if he does you wrong and he comes back and says, forgive me, you forgive him. And so if, if man uh, is willing or if God wants man to give, forgive somebody 70 times seven, how many more times will God forgive us? My, well, praise God. Praise God. You see, God is a good God. He's a merciful God. And he watches over us and takes care of us. And a lot of times, if we could only see what God keeps us out of, a lot of times we'd be scared. And so I'm glad for the goodness and the greatness of God. My prayer is that God will bless you. Would you I get something out of the broadcast you can take home with you. Uh, something that you can take with you as you journey down through life, it will help you. Not only today, but tomorrow, the next day, and next week, maybe next month. You might even forget it uh, for a month or so. But one day you, you'll remember it or God will bring it to your remembrance and you'll wonder, well, where in the world did that come from? Uh, but you see, uh, if it's in there, God can bring it out. And so I'm glad today for the goodness and the greatness of God. What a mighty God we serve. And so, you see, he loves you unconditionally. And if he didn't, he wouldn't put up with us. And so I'm glad. I'm so glad. 
We want to send our broadcast out to all those that are sick and afflicted that God would reach down and touch them, that you could be lifted up, able to go down life's highway rejoicing because you know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. My, my. And once it's written there, you're the only one that can take it out. Nobody else can't do it. I know there's a lot of people who says, well, this one done this to me, and this one done that to me, and this one done that to me, and so I just quit. Well, the quitting part was your fault. It wasn't God's fault. And why? Because God is just as willing to forgive somebody else as he is to forgive us. And so you see, I'm glad for the greatness and the goodness of God. My prayer is that God will touch your body today, uh, that he can raise you up. And as I've said many, many times, uh, uh, if we only had the faith, if we only had the faith of the woman that had the issue of blood that came in behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment, if we only had her faith, you see, my, why? Because she, before she ever got there, she had always said, if I can just touch him, if I can just touch him, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made a whoo. Honey, this is what it takes. This is what it takes. That's the reason that it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Whenever you hear God's word, it builds faith. And so you see, if I only had the faith of the woman, that touched the hem of Jesus' garment. I wouldn't have to worry about being sick. My, my, because God's able to heal. If he says all things are possible to them that believe. If we'll believe, God is able to do it. But you see, it's us that, has, now us that does the failing and the falling. It's not God. And so I'm glad today for what God's doing. My prayer is that God will intervene in your heart, in your life, that he'll touch your body right there where you're at. You might be bedfast, but God's able to lift you up. <coughs> Remember, my mind, they, 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 they was in a house one day and Jesus was teaching the people. And there, they, there was four men that had a, a buddy that was sick. He had palsy and he wasn't able to get around. And they come to where Jesus was, but couldn't get in. The house was full. There's such a crowd, they couldn't make it. So they went up on top of the roof and they pulled up the shingles and let that man down, right down through the roof in front of Jesus. And you know what Jesus done? Jesus looked up and he seen those men up there. And then he looked at the man that was sick. He says, their faith has made you whole. My, my, my. Huh. I hope you can feel what I feel because that's what God wants, you see. By their faith, you're made whole. And so, you see, sometimes we think, well, I don't have the faith. It's not how much faith you got, it's how much I got. And especially if I'm the one that's bringing you to Jesus. And so I'm believing God today. Well, why isn't everybody healed? I don't know. I can't answer that. But there's times that people will come to me and say, I want you to pray. I look at them and say, I don't have the faith for that. I don't have the faith for that. But you see, if I've got the faith, God's, God's able to do the healing. Well, praise God. Didn't know it was going to get into all that, but I did. And so my prayer is that God will touch your heart. He'll touch your life. He'll touch your body. I bet you have a determination my, uh, to get in the Word of God and look, look and read and search uh, uh, after men of faith. You see, Elijah had faith. A lot of those old patriarchs had faith in God. Abraham had faith, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So you see, God loves you, and he doesn't want you to be sick and afflicted. He said, I will. Look in 3 John. Uh, uh, there's only one chapter, but verse number 2. He says, I will that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Does God not want you well? If he didn't, he'd have never said that. God wants you well. God wants you whole. 
And so my, um, we want to pray the day that God will reach out and touch you. Your life can be made whole. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach out and touch mm, those that sit under the sound of my voice. God, that the Holy Spirit, that anointing of the Holy Spirit would just flow through at that TV set right there in front of them. <laughs> and God, they would be able to rise up and to walk. God, because you're still in the healing business. And so I'm praying today, and God, that the will of God will be done. And we know that it's your will for us to be healed. Your will, God, because your word says so. And so I'm praying, God, that you'd intervene. Heavenly Father, have your way in people's hearts and lives. God, save the lost. Heal the sick. Set the captives free. And we'll bless you for it and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Sister Nancy, you're going to come and sing us a song. Thank you. I feel the touch Sing, oh, pray for his love victory. 
thought you had a hold on me, but you were wrong. I've been set free. Praise God. I'm glad and I'm thankful for the goodness and the greatness of God. Because without Him, I could do nothing. But with Him, all things are possible. I had no idea that Sister Nancy was going to sing this song until just before service time. And I asked her, I said, would you leave that song and lay there? that I can look at it for a little bit. And she did. Why? Because that song says a lot. And it goes along with the scripture that God gave me to read. 
You can find this in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, starting with verse 6. The Apostle Paul, you see, he was writing a letter to Timothy. Timothy was saved under Paul's ministry, and Paul considered Timothy as being his son. And so he would write Timothy a letter. Why? Because the Apostle Paul knew. I believe that God had already let him know that his time on earth was short, that he, wasn't, he didn't have a lot of time left. God will do that at times. God will do that. I, I, I read the testimony of an, an older preacher uh, that he had just got out of a two-week revival, was a little over 100 years old. And everybody was fussing him, saying, you got to slow down. You, you just can't do that. He said, don't worry about it. He said, I'm okay. I'm going home tomorrow. And they looked at him, and they said, what do you mean? He said, I mean what I said. I'm going home tomorrow. <coughs> and he looked at him, and he said, as a matter of fact, I'm leaving about 10 o'clock in the morning. And so he went home, and, and he was staying with his daughter and her husband. And so uh, the next morning, his daughter uh, got him up, and he got up, uh, and he ate his breakfast, and he went in the living room and sat down in his chair. And his daughter says, now, I watched him. I kept a close eye on him and said, when 10 o'clock come, I, I wanted to be watching him to see what happened. And said, he sit there, and, and he read his Bible, and he, she said, I know he was praying. And he said, about 10 o'clock. said, he, he just leaned back in his chair, just leaned his head back and went, and he was gone. He was gone. You see, the apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, he said, for I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. You see, I believe that God had already told him that his time on earth was very, very short. Why? Because Paul had been through a lot. And I thought of it uh, as Nancy was singing this song, even before our service. And the songwriter says, I'm weary and tired of carrying this load. My, my, my. Can't you imagine listening to the Apostle Paul? At, well, even now that he was writing a letter, he talked about all of the burden of the church that was laid on him. Why? Because he helped to uh, build these churches. No, they didn't build buildings. Uh, my, they built churches. Uh, he got people saved. The people is not the building. The, the church uh, is the people. The people is a living organism, you see. My, we work in our buildings and we make them so pretty and everybody's dying and going to hell and we don't think nothing at all about it. It's time that we begin to get our eyes open and see that these people up here walking down the streets, uh, uh, people that we meet from day to day, <coughs> people that we work with, uh, they're lost and undone without God. And God's calling them to come, uh, but he's looking for somebody uh, to stand in the gap. You remember reading back uh, uh, in the Old Testament, God said uh, in Israel that he looked for somebody to stand in the gap uh, and make intercession for the people, but he couldn't find one. God's looking for prayer warriors. He's looking for somebody that's willing uh, uh, to take on the responsibility uh, to have a determination uh, uh, to see some things happen for the glory of God uh, instead of just drifting along with the tides of time, uh, uh, meeting people, looking at them, smiling at them, uh, uh, passing them a bottle of water and think, well, I'm doing the will of God. Uh, how many times do you pray for them? My, my. You see, it's not by works that we're saved. 
It's by belief. I, I remember reading in the chat in God John's gospel uh, uh, whenever uh, the disciples, and I don't think it was just the twelve. Uh, I believe it was the whole followers uh, uh, of Jesus that was in the crowd. Uh, they came to him one day and said, "Lord, what was what must we do uh, to work the works of God?" And Jesus, I believe, astonished every one of them uh, whenever he looked at them and he says. To do the work of God is to believe on him whom God has sent. That's the work of God is believing, not doing, but it's believing. And whenever we begin to believe God, uh, we'll see that God will do some great things, uh, uh, not only for us, uh, but he'll do some great things for the church. Uh, he's able to set the church on fire. Uh, my, uh, no doubt you've heard the little story uh, many, many times about uh, the old farmer, a uh, man that lived across the road from the church, uh, and he, he lived there most all his life, uh, but he never did attend the church. Uh, and one day, uh, one morning, one Sunday morning real early, uh, the custodian of the church came uh, and built a fire in the old wood stove sitting there in the middle of the floor, and I don't know what happened, but the church got on fire, and here come that old farmer uh, carrying two buckets of water. I might have put the fire out. How uh, they put the fire out, uh, and the old custodian looked at him, he said, Sir, uh, this is the first time I ever saw you in church before in my life. Uh, the old farmer looked at him, he said, First time the church had ever been on far. <coughs> you see, God's looking for somebody to pack some wood uh, so we can get a fire built. My, uh, not to rock everybody to sleep, but to wake everybody up uh, and let them know uh, my, that we're only going to pass this way one time. Uh, and whenever our time comes to an end, uh, I believe that we uh, will be like the old apostle Paul. We'll say, and the time uh, of our departure is at hand. Honey, we have no, no, uh, I, guarantee of tomorrow none whatsoever but listen to him he said I fought a good fight I've kept the faith I have finished my course you see the time for me to go is now because I'm finishing up but he said I want you to know he said I'm free because I've preached unto you what God has given me to preach I didn't try to change it I didn't try to soften it up up any. I just give it to you like God give it to me. Yes, sometimes uh, we got to chew on it. And there was times uh, I might when a preacher's up pray, be preaching, uh, I'll get behind him. I'll pray for him. Uh, and I'll say, Amen, preacher. Uh, one Sunday morning uh, after church was over, uh, there was a fellow come walking up to me. He said, I want to ask you a question. I said, Okay. He said, How's come you holler, Amen? I said, To keep from hollering, Ouch. Why? Because uh, I'm not just a human, and that preacher will get to you, honey. He'll preach you right under conviction. Uh, uh, he'll skin you and smile at you both at the same time. Uh, my, he wants you to know uh, that God's got something greater and higher. Uh, he don't want you down here if you're capable of being up here. He wants you to move up. You see, God's still God. And so you see the Apostle Paul says, I finished my course, I've kept the faith, and henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. What's laid up for you? Is there a crown of righteousness laid up for you? God loves you. He don't want you to be lost. Man, praise God. Our time's come and gone. But I want you to know Jesus loves you. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach out. Touch those under the sound of her voice. Let them hear the voice of God speaking inside them. Even if you've got to speak so loud they can hear it with their ears. And let them know that time is short. Have your way in our hearts and our lives. I bless the message, God, as it goes forth. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. It's our prayer until this time next week.